Hi, and welcome to tonight's Japan Softball League Google Hangout. I'm Amanda Scarborough, and I will be the moderator for tonight. This Google Hangout is brought to you by Women's Sports News, which you can follow on Twitter, Facebook, and all social media at WSN 24-7. Make sure you follow WSN for all the latest information on your favorite female sports and female athletes. During tonight's Hangout, we'll be giving out prizes for sponsors uh, from sponsors Glitter Bands, Boomba, and Sports Rocker. And how do you win a prize? Will you submit a question to our panel using the hashtag WSN Hangout on Twitter, the Q&A on the Google Plus Events page, or the Japan Softball Lake Hangout page on WSN247.com. Tonight, we have an amazing panel. All of them have experience in playing overseas. And allow me to introduce you to Jordan Taylor. Last year, she ended the 2013 season as one of the top four pitchers in the Japanese Softball League. Jordan, say hello. Hi. Also, we have Monica Abbott, three-time Japan Softball League MVP. Konnichiwa. And Megan Wiggins, who <laughs> has the highest batting average in the Japan Softball League and who was also the home run winner. Konnichiwa. And later on we'll be having Natasha Watley join us. Unfortunately she's in California where traffic is um, non-stop but until then we'll be able to get her on um, in just a little bit. But Jordan I wanted to talk to you to um, kind of explain what is the Japan Softball League and how many teams are there. Just a little bit more info on it. Um, well, there's only 12 teams, and it's two foreigners per team, so we have, I think, six of us, six teams have foreigners. Um, so it's different from the U.S. in that companies support the teams over there. Um, so I played for Denso, which is, I, they like make carburetors or radiators and air conditioning and then obviously Monica and Tosh play for Toyota so it's just, it's companies that you'd recognize over there supporting women's sports and men's sports as well. And what do you guys play? What, what's different about the a normal summer league in, in the United States? Um, I would say it's a little bit more competitive. Obviously there's more teams. Um, not as many Americans, obviously. <laughs> um, it's different playing against Japanese players, definitely. They're all fast. Uh, they don't get jammed very easily, so it's a lot of fun pitching to them. Monica, how do you think that the Japan Softball League differs from the Pro League in the U.S.? Well, I think when you look at softball in general, you you know, Japan is is known for certain things that they're really good at. They're quick. They're defensively sound. Um, they're beyond defensively sound. They make they make great plays in the U.S. look very routine. Um, so that's a big difference. And in the U.S., that we're strong in we're strong in offense. We're a we're a power we're a power country. We we believe in the home run. We believe in the speed game, and then we believe in strong pitching. Where our defense isn't necessarily as sound. Um, Japan, they're gonna they're gonna play small ball. They're gonna get a runner on, move her over, hit, it, move her over again, and then try and hit her in with a single. You know, they're singles game type of offense. Um, they'll steal on you a lot more than they would in America. So I think that's the big difference. Is just, you know, Americans always think like, oh, like we're gonna, we're gonna hit them in. Like we'll come back in the seventh. We'll come back in the sixth or the fifth. And we're so used to getting runners on base and we're so used to scoring a lot of runs and getting people on base that sometimes in America we we actually leave a lot of runners on base. Whereas in Japan, like there's not as many people left on base. Um, so that's a big difference. Uh, quick question for you and then I'm going to ask Megan Wiggins a question. But um, Monica, is your ERA higher in Japan or in the United States after you play? Um, you know, I don't really follow my stats that well. I just follow more like wins and losses. <laughs> did we win no, that day or did we lose? Yeah. <laughs> and did I feel like I gave my best effort? So I can't say if it's higher or lower. We play less overall games there. Um, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Yeah, just curious as you're saying they're better at knocking in runs. But um, Megan, well, they, I, they, they like take advantage more so. 
is kind of the thing. Like, if, if someone gets on base, like if you, if let's say I hit someone in the bat, in the box, like someone gets hit by a pitch, I throw a rise ball and it hits them in the elbow. Like they're freaking cheering. <laughs> they're cheering as they're running down to first base, smiling and laughing. Like they're like, yes, I got on base. In America, we're like pissed that we got hit. <laughs> and now we, we don't get to hit the ball. Um, Megan, I remember us having a conversation and you described to me about um, kind of how the day-to-day -day practices and the trainers are a little bit different in Japan than um, what goes on here in the United States. What, how do you feel like it's different in terms of practice and just uh, maybe intensity or maybe you have a better word for it? Um, well, I think it definitely it, it changes a lot from here you know, in the United States and you go over to Japan because they don't have time limits. You know, here we're always used to time limits in college. You have so many hours you can practice. You know, the pro league, we only practice for so long, you know, for so long. And I think the difference, the biggest difference there is they have no time limits, realistically. And so you hear a lot of stuff about six-hour practices, eight-hour practices, and that's realistic, you know, a lot of times. And we're like, what? That's crazy, you know, because we practice maybe three hours in college, you know. So there's a lot of training going on. There's a lot of individual training that the girls doing on their own after the six-hour practice, you know. So it's really, it's just, it's timeless. You know, it's always softball. It, it realistically, it's just always softball. I and, mean, you know, we have a trainer that, you know, gives us massages whenever we need it, you know, this, that, and the other. And I think like the biggest massages, difference is... You like those massages, huh, Wiggs? <laughs> so if you like those massages, huh, you're like, face, your face but, just I mean, up. Every day. Every day. <laughs> but to be honest, I mean, I think it, it, it helps because they take care of their bodies more and they're always using it. And I think you, you'll see a lot more older girls playing in the Japanese league, at, you know, than here. And I think it's just because they have that ability to have the trainer all the time whenever they need it, you know, and then they practice all day every day. And I think it, you know, it's just they don't have any time limits. And that's just because I feel like, you know, in college, I don't even think they have, because we have three different leagues in Japan. I think there's like kind of like D1, D2, D3 basically is what it is. Um, so it's just, you know, they have all the time in the world that they could possibly practice and they use it, all of it. <laughs> We actually already have a question coming in from Lisa Pinkston. Uh, Jordan, I'll throw this one out to you. What's the average attendance at y'all's games? Um, I don't really. We, I mean, we average like a couple hundred, but opening games. I mean, the champion or not champion, but like the one versus the two of opening games. I it was obviously Monica. Um, oh. I had like eight thousand, ten thousand people at this stadium. So we definitely averaged, I think, more than we do here on the, in the U.S. Yeah. for pro games anyways. One thing that's kind of unique there that's kind of different is no team really has a home field. And there's built-in fans because it is based on a company league. So like my team, Toyota, you know, they have like softball cheering clubs and, you know, kind of like the Alumni Association of Toyota, and they all come and they travel to each game. And, of course, some locations have more fans than others. Um, our opening game, like Jordan said, had, I think, 8,000 people, but our championship series in November can have anywhere, can have, has had up, oh, in my, sorry, since I've been there, it's had up to, like, 15,000 people there. And that's well, where I think four teams have been at, at one location. Monica, I think that's a good segue to talk about the corporations that support the JSL teams and how the corporate su support affects the, the growth of softball in Japan. Yeah, um, it's kind of cool. Like Toyota Motor Corporation is actually the, t the team I play for. They kind of have a couple other teams like Denso, which is Wiggins and Jordan's team. Feel free to jump in if you all want. Um, it's like their sister company, and then Shoki, which is the team Smitty played for um, for a long, long time and was known for over there. They're also a sister company, so it creates that rivalry, and people use it to make bit, do business, and um, the girls play softball during the season, and they, right now in the off season, like, they're in the office. They're going to the office 9 to, th nine to 3, 9 to 5, and they're there to rally the, the employees and, um, you know, give them something to look forward to and to cheer people to cheer for, give them that relationship. 
Uh, we actually have another really fun question from Sarah Bowie, this one for Megan Wiggins, uh, from Twitter. As a great home run hitter, do you feel you hit more home runs, sorry, homers, I like that better, against homers. Japanese pitchers or American pitchers? Well, statistically wise, it would be American pitchers. Um, I wish I hit more off Japanese pitchers, but um, Monica mentioned it earlier, we don't play as many games uh, during our professional league here, we play roughly around 45, something, you know, somewhere around there. Um, so we only play like 22 or 20, 22, 24 games in a Japanese league. So the opportunity to hit as many home runs, you know, is not there. But um, I definitely hit more off American pitchers. Um, I think it's, for me, I think it's more because I'm used to them. I know them. I know, you know, tendencies here, tendencies there. And speed-wise, I think it has a lot to do with it as well um, because over there, Generally, they have slower pitching, um, and they have they can locate it on, on a dime. You know, great changeup. You know, all of the above. But I definitely hit more off American pitchers. A uh, quick question into that that kind of connects to it. But are the fields the same size? Are they bigger, smaller? Uh, about exactly the same size. What's the difference? Um, well, we play on usually play on. Well, so, I mean, sometimes we play on baseball fields, like you know how we do here, and it's like the outfield's kind of cut. The infield is really big. Um, I'm not positive um, with the size difference. It might be a little smaller. I I don't know. I think they play international international fences. I'm pretty sure they do. I don't. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. And they follow like international rules to a T. So anything. Yeah. So like heavier ball. Yeah. yeah. Three se longer three fences. Second, three second pauses. Two twenty all the way around. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Only in so it, it, yeah, it might be. It's probably similar. I mean, we play on fields that are different, but I guess they all probably dirt. Similar. We play on all dirt fields. <laughs> yes, we do play on all dirt fields. <laughs> well, Sarah Bowie, you're actually going to be our first giveaway winner. You're going to win the shirt from Boomba. So, thanks again, Sarah, for your question. And in fact, uh, Sarah, I believe, asked another question. Uh, Monica, what was the biggest culture shock you faced when you went to play in Japan? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think this would be an interesting question for everyone, but probably, I think, obviously the language is the biggest thing, but uh, culture shock. Okay, I, I'll just tell like this story on the, in a game. One time we were playing in this game, it was like a championship game of one of one of the tournaments we were playing in, and there was a runner. Uh, there was a runner. Uh, runners on first and second base, and our interpreter comes out, and she's have we're having like a little meeting, um, and she's always really good at interpreting, but at this point she comes out and our coach starts talking in the circle, and deciding what we're going to do. Do we want to get the lead runner? Do we want to just get an out? What's the plan here? <laughs> and she goes, throw throw the ball to the hi the higher base. And for a moment, like, me and Tasha just looked at each other, like, wide-eyed. The higher base, like, the base above the other base? Like, the higher base. What does that even mean? Obviously, she was saying, go and get the lead out. <laughs> but at that point, like, you know, if tensions are rise, it's really, you're really stressed out because you're in a tight situation. You're not thinking about the obvious. You're like, the higher base? What's the higher base? I've never even heard of the higher base. <laughs> so I, I think those are probably the funniest and sometimes the hardest things to get used to when you're first over there, the language. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're oh, one second, Jordan, before I get this one, you can answer. If you're just joining us, we're discussing professional softball overseas with American athletes. Jordan Taylor. Monica Abbott, Megan Wiggins, and soon to be here, Natasha Watley, who all play in the Japan Softball League. If you, any of you guys out there have any questions or comments, please send them to us. The more the better. We love the questions by using the hashtag WSN Hangout on Twitter, the Q&A on the Google Plus Events page, or the Japan Softball League Hangout page on WSN247.com. <coughs> Um, I was just going to say when you play, they have um, cheerleaders, and everybody has their own cheerleader with a big drum. Some Shoki, Toyota Shoki, who uh, Michelle Smith played for, and Kilani plays there now, uh, they actually have cheerleaders with pom-poms 
but they have organized cheers and it is so loud on the field. I had to get used to that. It was, it's literally like being in the middle of a beehive. It's just so much noise and there's organized cheers and they do not stop for three hours. Just nobody stops. It's insane. You know what I loved about the cheerleaders, love about the cheerleaders, Jordan, is like our, I don't know, I think your team too, but we have male cheerleaders. You know, normally oh, yeah. it's always like girls, in American style, it's girls, you know, in skirts and stuff. But in Japan, it's like men cheerleaders, and it's it's awesome because males are cheering on the female athletes. They have like all these like hand signals. They're like very I don't even know how to describe. It's it's a trip when you first get there. Okay, awesome. We have another question from Brianna Flanagan, and it's from Twitter. And she, I think she's. This is towards Wiggins. But what's your favorite part of the game? Um, winning. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, home run cakes. Mean, home run, home run, home runs. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this one to Japan. Um, but my favorite part of the game playing in Japan is just um, like they were talking about earlier, uh, Monica and. Jordan just discussing different different things that have happened as far as like the language barrier and stuff like that. Um, it, it's to a point now. I'll be going back for my third year, but it's to a point where, you know, you're all speaking the same language when you're on the field. You know, you, you have your own language that you speak, and at some point it doesn't even matter that you speak different languages. And you know, just the friendships that you know you you have over there, and the you know the things that you're able to accomplish by only playing the same game. And you know, not even speaking the same language or knowing, you know, hardly anything about them except that they play softball, and you know, you get to know them and stuff like that. But I would have to say that's probably my favorite thing: just having the same chemistry that you are able to have in America and with your, you know, American teammates and you know, people you can talk to 24/7 in English. Having that same bond and chemistry with the girls on your team in Japan, um, to me, that's something that you know. I wish everybody could just, you know, experience because, I mean, it's amazing. It's just, you know, one of those things that people overlook, you know, it's it's just another friendship. It, it, it's something that you don't even have to speak the same language. You just play the same game, and I think that's one of the favorite things for me, you know, playing with the different girls on the team and getting to know them and being so close to them that I can play the game I love, and they can too, and we have no clue what each other is saying half the time. So it's just it's it's a special feeling. It's a special you know special something that everybody doesn't get to experience. But that would probably be, you know, the best part of um, the best part of the game over there for me. Look at you getting a little deep down compared to your first <laughs> answer of winning. I mean, come winning. on, I got a, getting a little emotional there. Yeah. Um, another question for you while we're on it. Yeah, don't tear up quite yet because we need to know from Gene Holt. Uh, wants to know: Would you rather hit off of Jordan Taylor or Monica Abbott? <laughs> Um, I can answer that. She hit a home run off of me this summer. <laughs> um, and yeah. BP. Have questions here, and we will hang no out. No comments. <laughs> yeah, plead the fifth on that one. I would rather hit off Amanda Scarborough. Boom. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Amanda Scarborough is going to be leaving the hangout now. She's going to demand that actually. <laughs> um, this is. Let's let's give this to Jordan. Um, as we quickly change subjects to get away from that comment, but how were you selected to play in Japan, and, and how long have you been there? Um, it's a little weird how I was selected to play the um, stats guy. Um, for Denso also does stats for Team Japan, and he saw me pitch in World Cup and had suggested to the company to watch me, but apparently um, through... It's, she's a agent, well, it's an agency that only um, works for the Japanese League to the Americans, and they do the link there. Um, she had seen me separately, so they were already interested without her knowing it type of thing, and she told them about me. So, um, yeah, that's how I kind of got selected. Everybody kind of has a different story, though, of how they got picked up, but mine was through... Um, an agency that works for the companies over there. Okay, Monica, what about you? Um, I, uh, I was playing... 
Looks like we seem to have lost uh, Monica, so Wiggins, why don't you go ahead and answer it. How did you end up getting selected to play in Japan? Um, I think it, Sorry. to be honest, it's one of those things where you kind of don't really know the real answer behind it. Um, I would assume maybe college and then maybe the NPF, you know, during my first season, I guess. Um, so that's what I think. You know, I think pretty much that's how it worked. I guess. I remember talking to Monica my first year. We were all just hanging out in our apartment, and we were talking about Japan because I, you know, I was like, oh, I'd love to play in Japan, you know, blah, blah, blah. But usually they take pitchers and catchers, you know, it just works like that. Um, I was like, well, you know, I can catch. You know, I caught my senior year in high school. You know, I can make it work, you know, just, you know, <laughs> playing around and talking about it. Um, and, you know, sure enough, I mean, they contacted me around Thanksgiving two years ago, and I was like, was like, yeah, absolutely, I will. Am I catching? Do I have to catch? You know, but so that's what happened. I mean, it, you know, like she said, everybody it happens differently. But I was pretty excited when I got the call. Though I almost lived in tears, almost. I think you called me right oh, after Wigs. I got to go mental I gotta again. Go. Yeah. So it, I mean, it was it was pretty special because me and Monica had talked about it, and it was one of those things you you don't really think is gonna happen, but you would love for it to happen. So I was just kind of like. <gasps> Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, another I question from Twitter. Too. Sorry about that, Wiggins. It's another okay. question from Twitter um, from Farah, and I really like this question too. Any passionate rivalries in JSL, like the Bandits and Pride, Wiggins, Laurie rival, any rivalry with uh, <laughs> Wayno or Aussie Porter? And hashtag Team Wigs. Man, you got a lot of fans out here, Megan Wiggins. Hey, I retweeted. It was my job. This mm -hmm. is the most I've tweeted in like two years. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the rivalries like? Are there any that are similar? Or Kind of give us the, the scoop on maybe some pitcher-hitter rivalries that go on, too. Is this my question? Am I answering this? Um, Monica, let's give it to you. Okay. Um... <laughs> Wait, no. um, well, I know my team has a pretty big rivalry with Wayno and Renesa, Renesas, Renesis, Takasaki, Takasaki Renesis, um, and Toyota Motor Corporation. We have a pretty big ri rivalry, and I know Shoki and Denzo have a really big rivalry, also. Um, that all carry, yeah. Yeah, and then also <laughs> Shinogi. And Sagawa, which is where Stacy Porter plays, um, who is from Australia, national team. She's an Olympian, 2008-2004. So um, she's played over in Japan for a little bit, and that's a big rivalry also. Um, as far as, like, a batter rivalry, I don't know. I don't know about that one so much. Hmm. I don't think uh, we'd like to welcome Natasha Watley to the call. Hi, Hi Natasha. Hey, girl. Hey. Uh, hi, Tash. Hey. Oh, wow. Hey. Hey, girl. Are you? Sorry. <laughs> Jump right in. It's like, yeah, it's like right. flashing everybody. Hey. You came in at a good time because we're talking a little rival reaction, and um, Farah from Twitter wanted to ask, wanted to know if there were any passionate rivalries like the bandits and pride or just any kind of rivalries that you can think of over in Japan that kind of come to your mind even if they're between like individual people of course well obviously there's a rivalry between Denzo um, there's a huge rivalry we have uh, obviously the biggest rivalry that can you guys hear me yes mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> the biggest rivalry <laughs> that comes to mind is probably us and Renaissance and that's between um, us and Yukiko Ueno that's um, the Japanese pitcher that beat us in Japan, um, the 2008 Olympics. So that's probably our biggest rival that comes to the top of my head. Uh, just FYI, if you're just joining us, <laughs> we're discussing professional softball overseas with American athletes Jordan Taylor, Monica Abbott, Megan Wiggins, and now Natasha Watley, who all play in the Japan Softball League. If anybody out there listening has any questions or comments that you want to ask, we want to hear from you. Please give them to us. You can use the hashtag WSN Hangout on Twitter. You can use the Q&A page on the Google Plus Events page or the Japan Softball League Hangout page on WSN247.com. Send them in. We want to hear from you. 
Um, our second giveaway is going to be a glitter band headband, and that's going to go to Farah, who just asked our last question. So thank you, Farah, for your question, and sport a little glitter with some headbands. Awesome. Um, <laughs> let's talk about um, how long your guys' practices are. Uh, Natasha, since you just came in, are they pretty intense? What is an eight-hour practice like? Give us a little bit of insight. Um, definitely there's moments of intensity. Obviously, um, it sounds like you heard that we have eight-hour practice, practices. Uh, but a typical day, I mean, obviously in the morning we'll uh, warm up. Our warm-ups usually take a good hour and a half to two hours. Um, then we'll go into defense where our whole team stays together, um, pitchers, catchers, infielders, outfielders. Um, we'll do a defense, and then we'll kind of break for lunch come back together and then we have offense in the afternoon where and then you know Monica's schedule is probably a little bit different than mine but then in the afternoon we hit um, we hit in the afternoon um, we'll hit off the tee do front toss and then go into what we call our free batting which is kind of like um, just live hitting off of a pitcher free batting. so whose team has the longer <laughs> practices here because I feel like um, like there's always a little like chuckle when you talk about the longer practices and stuff, and I want a little inside scoop of why, like what's going on. Um, uh, theirs are definitely more intense. <laughs> longer, yes. Toyota, Team, team Toyota is definitely more intense. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, another question, and this is from Softball Connects on Twitter. Um, we'll have. Wiggins answer this first. Does softball in Japan have more corporate sponsorships uh, which lag here in the US? Yes. Okay, Monica. Yeah, that's a great answer. <laughs> more corporate sponsorships? Yeah. yeah. They're all corporate sponsorships. Well, yeah. I think the difference is, is like it's not like a corporation. We're, I don't know, we're, we're owned by a corporation. A corporation yeah. So it's like... They don't really have sponsors, do they? Uh, I don't think they have... They, I don't think they have sponsors. Um, like we were talking about, like our... The company owns the team. Like the girls actually, you know, they work for the company and stuff like that. So it's not like here where we have like... I don't know. We don't really have corporate sponsors here. But um, yeah, the big corporations, they own the team. So that's pretty much where the funding and all that kind of stuff is coming from. So, but I do think it would be a great idea if we had corporate sponsors here. Um, okay, another question. Thanks everybody out there for sending your questions. That makes it just so much more awesome. I love it. How do Japanese coaches differ from American coaches? Um, Jordan, what do you think on that? Um, well, our coach likes to call himself American, so I think we got the easy way out for uh, Japanese coaches. I yeah. think Tasha and Monica will probably answer this a little How bit better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tosh. Take it away. How, how do Japanese coaches differ? Well, obviously, there's a language barrier. <laughs> Yeah, right. Sorry, that is semi <laughs> Holy cow. Sorry. Um, Internet's a little hard to come by over here. I would just, I guess the, the biggest thing that I could say is that the culture is different. So Japanese culture is very regiment, very, like our team is very, I would say, traditional. Um, I'm used, the only thing, I, I don't know if it's a personality or a cultural thing, but definitely I'm used to American coach, coaches being, um, I don't know, like joking more and you have this kind of, um, not that we don't have a relationship with our Japanese coach, I just don't know if it's a cultural or a personality thing, but just definitely it's just very regiment and he is our coach and um, obviously like there's no joking around, I'm used to, you know, having your inside jokes with your coaches or just, you know, things like that, but I think that's more of a cultural thing and that's an assumption. Um, I don't know, Monica, what you think? Yeah, I think I kind of I kind of agree. I think our coach like there's definitely like just like a very 
big amount of respect for our Japanese coaches and the players of, and d given to him by obviously he deserves it because he's our coach but you know to another level in the Japanese way again our team is very traditional um, so um, I don't know again like American coaches here like you usually yeah Japanese there's a, there's a, hi there's a hierarchy yeah a hierarchy so like our coach is here and then you have like you know your managers or assistant coaches and then you know players are down here and then you have your rookies even lower so there is definitely like a build up by as you are there longer but at the same time um, I think Americans the American style we have a little bit more of a relationship where you know a coach will <coughs> relate to you on your level uh, more so and try and use language that will help you understand what he's trying to get across more often so I don't know if that's a language barrier thing or if it's just culture um, can I answer this question too? Yeah. I guess. Um, well, I think it, I mean, <laughs> I'm only answering it because I think mine and Jordan's experience was quite different than their teams. Very um, different. and I think, I mean, there's still the hierarchy that's traditional, you know, but I, what I've noticed just coming from college and, you know, professionally going over there, our coach to me, I feel like doesn't necessarily coach as much as our coaches do here. Like, you know, individually, or, you know, just going through team situations. For our team, it's more like the older girls on the team. You know, it's like the girls, to be honest, coach the younger girls. Like the girl, they, you know, coach each other. Um, so it's not a lot of the coach saying this, 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 and this. It's more the older girls, which is, you know, very respected too from the younger girls and just everybody on the team. Um, it's more like they know what they need to do. They get it done. And if if everybody just doesn't know, that's, you know, I feel like the coach just steps in or he feels like he needs to say something at this point. You know, I feel like he steps in. So I think it's a, it's, it's clearly different on different teams. Um, but that definitely is a lot different um, from what they're saying about their coach. But um, so I think it's like they're saying the respect level and stuff like that. Our team is the older girls. That's like that. They know what they're talking about. You listen to them regardless, you know, so it's, it's kind of like, here, I feel like it doesn't matter how old you are, everybody can be coached, everybody can, you know, this, that, and the other. Hey, girl, you know, maybe you should work on this, blah, blah, blah. There, it's whatever the older girls say, that's what goes. And the younger girls are like, yes, ma'am, you know. And, it, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of respect, and it goes higher up, higher up, higher up. Um, but, you know, it just hearing what they say about their coach, ours is, like, completely different. Um, and he's Japanese as well, so... It's just a different style. The culture is the same, but it's just I, you know, the style is different, I guess. More laid back, I guess. A big thanks to Lisa Pinkston for that question. And because you've asked two today, I uh, want to go ahead and give you the third giveaway, which is a shirt from Boomba. So thanks again, Lisa, for the couple of questions that you've asked tonight. Um, one more question before we get to a couple of questions that I have. Uh, just for people who are curious out there, and we'll throw this to uh, Natasha, how many Americans even play in the league? Just as a reminder if somebody missed it at the beginning of the conversation. Um, well, what's the number? So there's 12 teams total. Um, six out of the 12 teams have foreigners. Um, and if you're talking about Americans, so we've got two, four, six. Um, so two on um, Toyota, two on Denso. Two on Shoki, that's six. Toda. Um, Toda, that's one. Seven. One on Honda, eight. Shoot. So, eight. I'm just, I have to think it out loud, but eight Americans, and then obviously um, there's two Australians that are also in the league. Um, there's um, two Canadians that are also in the league. And isn't there a max number of Americans that can be on it? Yes, um, on each team you can have a max of two foreigners on each team. Awesome. Um, and as far as it goes of like talking to your guys' family and friends coming over to visit you, what's been your experience with that? How do you handle that, Monica? <laughs> um, it, I mean, it's, it's good. They kind of just, they kind of get like an inside look, but it kinda, I always feel bad for them because we're at practice most of the time. <laughs> So I can't, so I can't like entertain them as much. But um, what what they always say is that they love the game. It's amazing how fast it is. 
how it, it's not like what they expected and from a traditional U.S. American softball game. Um, they always love the bands and the cheerleaders that play at the games also. Um, and the food. They love the food. So it, our experience with people coming over has been really good. Um, yeah. And it depends on which team you play for because, I mean, for us, we had it in our contract that they fly two people in, which it has to be family. So um, my mom got to come once, and then my mom and brother got to come another time. But Denso flies people in and stays for, like, five days, so we get to travel a little bit. But I think it's different for other teams. I'm not quite sure, though. Monica and Natasha, I know that you guys have gotten to travel a lot from being over there. What do you guys do in your downtime? Um, and what, when you actually have some time off, what do you like to do? Mani Chan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tasha Chan. Usually, we like to sleep on our day off, but. <laughs> Some of the other cool places that we've been, we've you know we've been to Kyoto and traveled around there, Nagoya and Tokyo, Osaka, um, Hiroshima, um, Okinawa. Where else have we been, Tosh? Thailand. <laughs> Thailand, yeah. So we kind of gotten to see a whole different culture and a whole different world because of you know our our Japanese experience, and it's really been. Quite, it's really been such a blessing to us, so we're very thankful for it. Wiggins, what about you? Well, those same places, um, a lot of the same places. Um, it, it's it's nice because you know the girls that you play on the team with, and you know me and Jordan, you know we got to go to a lot of these places with them and travel and you know see their culture and you know see the things that they think is beautiful and you know those places and you you don't realize it. I was thinking one of when my mom came. I think a lot, this goes for a lot of Americans. They don't realize how beautiful Japan is. Um, you know, we get to be there and go see all, you know, on the way to, like, games and stuff, we see oceans and palm trees, you know, all this beautiful stuff that, you don't, you know, people don't realize is there. So it's always, you know, we always get to see new things and always get to see just the beauty of Japan um, on the way to practice, on the way to our games, you know, traveling. So it's always a sight to see. Um, and even being in the cities and stuff, it's really, it's, it's just beautiful with all the buildings and just all the people just because it's different than here. Um, but, yeah, we I've gone to a lot of the same places. Uh, Jordan's gone to a lot of the same places. Um, but, yeah, it's it's pretty – it's it's amazing, to be honest with you. It's, and it, we, I think – where did we go that one time? Went to a um, – I can't remember where we were, but we go, we've been to a few shrines. Um, we went to a, a museum of some sort. I don't – I can't – I can't remember, but – um, we always try to do that. Maybe if we have an off day when we're traveling, the day we don't play, um, if we have time, the cities that we go to, we try to go to like the, the stuff they have in the city and what they're famous for and different stuff like that. So, Jordan, we got a question for you from Twitter from Boston U Softball. I think that you're a little <laughs> bit familiar with that team. But how did Jordan, your are you asking yourself this question, Jordan? No. <laughs> how did your experience in Japan help you with your college coaching career so far? at Boston University? Um, hmm. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this one. I was expecting a little bit different of a question. <laughs> I already warned people that people questions were going to come in. Um, I don't know. It's just, I guess, learning different... I mean, I've learned a lot of different playing styles over there, I guess, and seen a lot of different softball throughout my career, so I think it's helped uh, strategy-wise with the team, um, but I'm not sure if Japan helped me coach at all. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Okay, uh, another question actually for you, Jordan, uh, from Kina Lee on Twitter. How was the food in Japan? Oh my god, amazing. I love the food over there. Um, I think all of us actually do. Some people don't like it, which I don't really understand. Crazy. But it's not just sushi, and they do not have sushi rolls like we do over there. So California roll does not exist. It's um, 
like mayo and corn and weird fish parts and fish eyeballs and sushi I don't touch over there but um, well except for inari which is fried tofu which sounds disgusting but it's amazing um, they have a lot of restaurants over there where you can cook your own food so like shabu shabu and you get slices of meat and vegetables and there's a uh, oil basin right in the middle of your um, table and you dip the oils and you cook the food right there in front of you and then yakiniku is the same thing but with a grill um, and then there's nabu is that what it's called nabu pots or nabe like that yeah nabe um, so it's the same thing, and uh, where you like cook all the stuff in the pots. I think it's like seafood is stuff in there, but yeah, food over there is amazing, and I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> when do you guys go back? I leave March twenty fifth. Um, I'm not going back. So. <laughs> Pause your face. I know. We leave next week, next yeah. Tuesday. March yeah, 8th. we leave on the 18th. Team Toyota. <laughs> yep. yep. Team Dinto. Yes. Um, okay, a question from Carly Stevens from Twitter, and this is for Monica. Do you strike out more Japanese batters or American batters, Mon? <laughs> um... I know I can add three of those strikeouts in Japan. I add a couple of those in America. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all even. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't really know, to be honest. I would say it's probably about even. Um, and it kind of just depends if I'm having a good game or not. <laughs> you know, I'm, am I hitting my spots or in my stra – and sometimes strategy too, you know, am I pitching – Pitch, sometimes I pitch for ground balls. I pitch, I try and pitch people into getting to swinging themselves out. I try and pitch them into a ground ball to second, or pitch them into a, a fly ball to left field. So I do do that a lot more in Japan than I would necessarily in in America. But in America, it's more you know you see in the pro league, in the National Pro Fast Pitch League, on the Bandits, like we play the Pride or we play at the Akron Racers or the Pittsburgh team, we play them like 20 times. <laughs> like there's no more secret. So like yeah, the, maybe the first th couple times we play them, maybe I strike out, a, maybe I'll get a few more strikeouts, but towards the end when they're, they've seen me so many times, there's really nothing to hide. So, th and they, they get a lot more hits. <laughs> So it it kind of it's kind of even. Uh, Carly Stevens, we're going to go ahead and give you a glitter bands, a headband from glitter bands for giveaway number four. Thanks for your question, and you made Monica Abbott think, and and we always like it when Monica has to think <laughs> like that. So um, another question from Sarah Whitcoff on Twitter: Do you get offended when people say baseball and softball are the same? Natasha, I'll give that one to you. Um. I don't really get offended because, I mean, um, it obviously depends on the person and who's, who you're talking to, but um, if I had a son or a daughter, I wouldn't teach them to swing any differently, you know, if I was teaching them to play baseball or softball. So essentially, like, the fundamentals of the game are pretty much the same. Obviously, the rules differ. So, you know, it just depends on who you're talking to, if they call baseball, softball, you know, yes. You know, I would like to someone, if they're introducing me, I play softball. But um, if I'm just talking to that general person and they get the two confused, you know, I like to educate them. Yeah, they are two different sports. There's different rules. Um, but the fundamental, fundamentals of the game are pretty much the same. Yeah, I think that that's a really great answer. Thanks for that, Natasha, because I know that's not ever easy to answer. But no. another question from Twitter from Jody Powell that isn't necessarily regarding Japan, but because of how many games that you guys play and how hard you practice, it can kind of be associated. Um, Wiggins, I'll let you answer this. What is the best thing an athletic trainer can do to help a softball player get through a season physically? Uh, give them massages every night. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah, you stepped into that one. Um, no, I think it's important. Well, first, I think it's important as players to to utilize your trainers, and I think I've gotten better at that. I definitely have gotten better at that. Um, 
just utilizing them. And, and if you have one pain here, pain here, you know, go to him and say, this is what's happening. This is, you know, because you don't want to get ahead of yourself and then really get hurt at some point. Um, but just stretching, maintaining, you know, flexibility, you know, stay in shape, cardio, you know, stuff like that um, to where you can you can perform at your best, best of abilities. Um, and as an athletic trainer, I think it's important to keep up with your athletes, to, you know, stay on them. You know, enforce like the important things, stretching, running, you know, like I think Natasha or Monica mentioned it earlier, like their warm ups, as is ours, you know, we've almost gotten in a full practice like we would here before we even actually started practice, you know. So make sure there's like a long warm up. You know, we, we play a full game of soccer on our team, um, <laughs> for, you know, for half of our warm up. But my point is, you know, our warm-ups in Japan are a lot longer than they are in America, which I, I have started to appreciate more. But I think it's really important, you know, growing, you know, younger girls and as they get older to utilize how much time they put into warming up because that's going to get you ready for, you know, your game or practice or whatever. And I think it's, you know, maintaining strength and maintaining flexibility and all that kind of stuff is important as athletes, especially when you get older. I know we can all attest to that. Um, you get a little bit sore after you do a little bit less now, you know, so keeping in good shape and, you know, working out and doing what you need to do and, you know, staying on top of things I think is really important for the athlete and the, the trainer. We have just a few minutes left as time is winding down, but if anybody has any questions or comments, please send them to us by using the hashtag WSN Hangout on Twitter, the Q&A on the Google Plus Events page, or the Japan Softball League Hangout page on WSN247.com. Keep your questions coming. They've been awesome. We have a question from Kayla via WSN247.com, which we actually got um, prior to the Google Hangout. This is for Natasha. Uh, what is the most exciting part of the game to you and why? Um, gosh, that's a very hard question because um, I love everything about the game. Um, I love being up to bat in the crucial situation. I love making a great play on defense in a crucial situation. So um, that's a that's a hard question to answer. Like as long as I'm um, in uniform on the field, I like it. Uh, that's a hard one for me to answer. I like everything. Uh, Monica, would you recommend going over and playing in Japan and? Um, I'm going to give you two questions. Recommend going to play in Japan, and if somebody want, was interested in really trying to play overseas, like to get to go play in Japan, how would you recommend them going to do that? Um, yeah, I definitely recommend playing in Japan, especially if you want to extend your career after college. I think that's the biggest problem in our sport right now, is finding suitable places to play and places that can support you after your college career. We have too many too many phenomenal, like phenomenal athletes in the college game that are not going on to play. They're just finished after their college career and it shouldn't be that way. So if you have the opportunity to play in the Pro Fast Pitch League, in the Japan Softball League, in Italy, in the Netherlands, like go play, see the world, take advantage of it and come back and give back and try and build and build this sport worldwide. So um, yes, play in Japan, but if you have an opportunity to go somewhere else, I'm a very like go play. Go play. <laughs> you know, do it as long as you can. So big supporter. Um, and then if you want to play in Japan or if you want to play overseas, I think the biggest thing is to go out and hone your skills, like be the best at what you do. Um, be the best athlete you can be and take advantage of the opportunities and the people that come come to you. So, for example, you're learning a lot about the Japanese League on this Google Hangout. Um, and, yeah. Is there anybody that maybe you could contact or email or network out to if you are somebody who maybe is from a bigger program to maybe get the attention of somebody that would want to go and play in Japan? Um... Honestly, they you they kind of pick people. It's not really like in in my experience, and you guys feel free to jump in, but they kind of like pick people. There is like an agency um, that has helped in the past, but if they want a certain player, they go out and find a way to contact them. Um, playing on the national team has I know helped a lot of players get over to Japan. Um, so. 
Uh, speaking of that, to give a little transition, we have a question from Sarah on Twitter. Um, do you think that softball will make it back to the Olympics in 2020, Natasha? Um, I think that it will. Um, it, and from the talks that I've been hearing, it sounds like 2020. Obviously, Tokyo is um, ho ho hosting the Olympics in 2020. And obviously, we're talking about Japan, um, softball in Japan. And softball and baseball are, like, huge in Japan. So every host country gets to pick a sport. And so it's sounding like um, it'll be back for 2020. I'm just I'm not too well versed on like what will happen after 2020 if it does make it back though. If you guys know. Yeah, I heard that the the latest that I've heard is that um, obviously there was talks in Sochi and then Tashi probably might know a little bit more than me, but I guess the next time the IOC meets is in December and. The, for them to get in in 2020, it has to be six years out of that Olympic of that 2020 Olympics, with, which would be in December. So that's when we'd be up to try and get it for 2020. Sarah, thanks for your question about the Olympics. I actually want to give you giveaway number five, which is a T-shirt from Boomba. So thank you for your support. Um, talking, and we have another one actually. Um, this is from Academia Elite, and this is from Twitter. More than 40 million Americans will play at least one softball game per year, including 1.2 million youth. How can clubs help promote the NPF? So kind of tra uh, transitioning, just talking a little bit, not so much about Japan, but the NPF. Wiggins, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think there's a lot that can be done. I think there's a lot that can be done on both sides. Um, but as, you know, younger teams and, you know, the youth of America that play softball, um, I think, you know, I think it's important for them to have somebody to look up to and, you know, for them to recognize as, you know, the best athletes in the game now. Um, and, you know, I think that requires our league and, you know, us to do more to get out in there and, you know, you, you know, go to camp, do camps, you know, visit, do all this stuff. Um, but I also think it's important for, you know, the coaches and parents to, to bring their kids and to, to have them have role models and, you know, to give them the opportunity to see us play or, you know, do that. And I know that, you know, we have a lot of followers on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, you know, of, you know, fans and little girls and people who enjoy, you know, the MPF and stuff. But, you know, you, there needs to be places that they can go see us play. They can interact with us. They can meet us, you know, stuff like that, that, you know, they can, hold, they can latch on to and hold on to that experience for us their life you know, 10 years from now, they say, hey, I remember when I met Monica Abbott or Natasha or, you know, Jordan Taylor or Megan Wiggins, you know, they need to have that opportunity to do that. Not, yeah, I followed Megan Wiggins on Twitter two years ago and she never followed me back, you know, or something like that. But they need to have those opportunities to hold on to. And I think a lot of us, if you ask us, you know, when we were younger, did we have somebody that we looked up to as a softball player or baseball player or athlete or, you know, whatever, you know, we'll probably say yes. Or did we meet somebody when we were younger and, you know, I mean, some of us, I'm not trying to point at anybody's age or anything like that, but some of us <laughs> were highly, you know, fans of some of the people that we play in the league with, you know, so that's just the 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 type of league that we have and stuff is just so different with age and experiences and stuff like that, but I think it's important for the girls to have those opportunities now and, you know, to latch on to something that they can hold on to forever. Well, you talked about being able to watch you guys play and how important that is. Is there how do you watch you guys play in Japan if you wanted to be able to stream a game online? Is there any way to do that? Yeah, there's a there's a link that um, it, it's a JSL link, you know, um, and it's their website and it's pretty much all in Japanese. I think unless you get it, go on Google and get it translated. I think. Um, but a lot of times you can just click on the pictures and it'll be, you know, there's usually two games going on or two games online. So it's, if you get in there, get to the website, you can either see the name in English somehow, the teams that we play for, either Toyota, Denso, you know, any of the other teams. But usually they're not always streamed, only certain places are streamed. So, um, yeah. And, I, and, you know, and, I, and usually just what Megan's saying, when we, um, when we know that they're streamed, I know like Monica will post it on her website and we... Yeah. Um, I'll post it all social media, the links to it. So just, you know, if you're out there, just follow us, and whenever there's a game, yeah. we'll, we'll always post it. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And usually when we post it, too, I know 
both me and Tosh have done this in the past, is we usually post the time that uh, that it'll be played mm-hmm. in America. So, like, what time it would be for you guys, East, Eastern Standard Time or Pacific Standard Time, whatever. So just look out for those. That's the best way to find out. And I yeah. want to add on, like, the Academia Elite question that asked about, you know, what can you do to help build the Pro Fast Pitch League? And uh, just kind of building off and just putting it straight straight up and blunt is, like, come to a game, buy a ticket, come and watch us play. And if you have a lot more money than that, buy a team. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come yeah, be an owner, team. okay? Be an owner of a, a team creates awesome. opportunities for others. Um, this is probably going to be the last question. Tashla, I, w- I want to throw it to you um, from Sydney. This is a, a really important thing that I think it can help a lot of girls out there who are wondering, but did anyone ever try to bring you down while you were trying to reach your goal as a professional softball player? And if so, how did you overcome it? And if nobody tried to bring you down, what... What kind of um, suggestions do you have for somebody who that's actually happening to? Yeah, um, I, my answer would be no because it, you're all about you are who the you're all about the people you are who the is whoever you surround yourself are. <laughs> I can't get the saying, but you get what I'm saying. You are, you are who you surround yourself with. You are who you surround yourself with. So never had anybody bring me down. So, but definitely, like if you have someone bringing you down, obviously that's a moment where you need to reevaluate your reevaluate who you're hanging out with because um, you shouldn't be surrounded by people who are bringing you down. People around you should be uplifting you, being positive um, people in your life, and um, you should always have a support system. Um, So never have had anybody um, try to bring me down. Monica, what about you? I would say the same thing that Tosh said, like surround yourself with good people, you know, Surround yourself with people that are going to motivate you and make you a better athlete. Um, and know that sometimes people challenge you, but that's not bringing you down. They're trying to make you better. So um, surround yourself with good people. Accept their challenges. Accept your coach's challenges. Okay, last question for all. Uh, Wiggins, you go first, then Monica, and then Natasha, then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Wiggins, how have you been preparing to return to Japan for the start of the season? Um, well, I think a lot of it for me is just mental, uh, you know, because we're going over there for so long and, you know, we'll be away from home for nine months. Um, so a lot of it is just mental, uh, you know, trying to stay in shape, eat right. You know, you don't want to go over there having to redo everything and get back in shape, you know, you kind of want to stay in shape so when you go over there, you're in shape to play. I mean, you won't be in playing shape, you know, you get back in the routine and practicing for six hours and just the everyday thing. So, um, you know, just a lot of it's just mental and, you know, preparing yourself for going back over there and then not going over there 30 pounds heavier than you left. Um, You know, just staying in shape, staying active, you know. I know we're probably always busy doing something, um, but just, you know, Stand in shape. Mine. Oh. <laughs> um, I, for Sorry. me, I prepare to go over there as um, obviously just training, you know, in a sense. Like, you know, I, I was just down at spring training for baseball for the weekend, and, you know, these guys get to go down there, and may, maybe they're doing a little bit of off season weight training and stuff like that, and then they go in there and they're like, cocoon, right? You're in there, you're doing weights, you're with your team, and you get like three or four weeks, a whole month to go. But a lot of times, you know, we get a shorter amount of time, so you have to be ready when you go. Um, and as a female athlete, you know, I get out there, and we, we all go out, and we lift, and we run, and we train, and make sure that we're in good shape and ready to, you know, ready to do pitching workouts, ready to take ground balls, and make sure that the, the short amount of time that we that I have when I get to Japan is that I'm going to make the most of that time um, to really be ready for that opening day. Tosh? Yeah, and I would pretty much say the same thing as them is just trying to make sure that you're in shape because by the time we get there, we're wanting to just be able to jump in with our team and try to get into a lot of like team mode stuff. So I already want to be in shape, so just preparing physically and mentally, mentally, like Wiggins was saying, and just making sure that you're ready to go because, um, you know, for 
the three of us, um, we're looking at nine months of softball. So not only are we competing in Japan, we're competing back here in the MPF. So just getting ready for nine months of softball and just getting ready to um, mentally take that on. Okay, thanks everybody for their answers. <laughs> we had that last giveaway to give. That's a sports rocker giveaway. Um, sports rocker says ditch the bucket. Sports rocker provides mobility while sitting for bullpen, soft toss, coaching, and much more. And a sports rocker is going to go to Sydney, who asked that last question about if anybody ever brought you down while you're trying to reach your goals. So thanks, Sydney, for sending in your question. Um, on behalf of WSN, I'd like to thank Natasha Watley, Monica Abbott, Jordan Taylor, and Megan Wiggins for participating in the Japan Softball League discussion, as well as the sponsors Glitter Bands, Boomba, and Sports Rocker. If you didn't have a chance to watch all of tonight's JSL Hangout, it will be available on WSN247.com later this evening. For the latest information and news on your favorite sports, on your favorite women's sports and female athletes, make sure that you follow at WSN247 on social media and on the web at WSN247.com. Thanks, everybody. See you later.